Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming and sometimes hair so if that sounds like your thing make sure you are subscribed. Also come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not going to see here on YouTube. Today I want to talk about breakouts and how I deal with breakouts. Unless you follow me on Instagram and watch my stories you're probably never going to see me with a real spot and that's because of the way I organise my filming and my pictures and all that kind of stuff. So on a Monday I film everything so that's the only time I'm on camera and then if I'm gonna break out thankfully it's usually like Monday evening or do you know what I mean like on a Wednesday so by the time Monday comes back around again I'm sat here in front of the camera the breakouts are usually gone so today I'm going to share with you my prevention techniques and kind of like a little skincare routine including the products that I use when I do have a breakout so really quickly mention the one thing you do not do is pick your spot no matter how big or small you think it's gonna be this is what happens but let's talk about prevention. And the sponsor of today's video, which is actually Vanity Planet, they got in touch with me a while back now, sent me a couple of skincare tools or devices. So I actually fell in love with a couple of them, so we thought we'd work together. And one of the devices I absolutely love is the Veil, which is an LED acne and spot treatment. So this uses both red and blue LED light to kill acne-causing bacteria and helps reduce inflammation. So the blue light is the light that fights acne-causing bacteria and the red light is the one that helps with inflammation. Both in turn actually helping to um, reduce the likelihood of future breakouts and also dark spots and scars left from spots and acne, which is amazing because with every spot I get, I'm pretty much guaranteed to get um, a dark spot left over. As you can probably see from my forehead, I've got a few up there. So yeah, super easy to use. All you do is hold the light about quarter of an inch above the area. So for example, where I'm already getting breakouts just in the corner of my nose, I can feel like a spot coming. So I'll hold it there, quarter of an inch above the skin, hold it there for three minutes without moving. Three minutes is up, I move it to the next area. I like to concentrate on the redness of my cheeks as well. Super easy to use. Again, oh, I don't know if you can see that. There we go, yeah. In a previous video, I mentioned my new obsession with LED light therapy. And despite my initial thoughts, there have actually been numerous clinical trials on both a red and blue LED light, with one trial actually showing that when used every day for 10 weeks, users experience quite a significant reduction of both mild to moderate spots and acne, breakouts in general. And I actually mentioned in a previous video, there was a clinical trial that showed that red LED light has also been known to improve both um, redness on the skin, wrinkles, uh, boost collagen production, as well as even out your skin tone in general. So I'm kind of obsessed with finding out more and more about LED light therapy. At first I thought this does sound a little intimidating, it sounds super professional, but the device like the veil make it really really easy to use at home I don't really want to sit there at home with this big mask on my face with light shining in my eye That's not for me. It's like a tiny size as you can see. Oh look you can put this around your neck um, A tiny size it takes one AAA battery So I just sit at home on the sofa watching my stories I just kind of do this all over my face. So check out the description box for a link to the veil. And I've also got a discount code for you 30% off using code James Welsh at checkout. I'm gonna very, very briefly touch on diet. I think diet affects people's skin in so many different ways. For example, chocolate doesn't break me out. I know it breaks out a lot of people. Dairy doesn't really tend to break me out either. And I also have a terrible, terrible diet. One thing I do notice is when I suddenly take a turn to try and be really healthy, I sometimes overdo it. For example, um, I will suddenly start binging on fruit thinking this makes a good snack, you know, like a good alternative. I forget that fruit contains sugar and fruit will break me out. So for example, if I know I've got an event coming up, if I have to be somewhere, um, if I'm having pictures of myself taken, I know not to suddenly try and like become all healthy and lose weight a week before because I'm going to break out. That's not to say I eat like absolute crap for a week and don't eat healthy. I just don't overdo it. For me, any sudden change in my diet, drastic change um, is going to break me out. But that's all I'm going to talk about. Just kind of be more mindful about what you're eating, even when you're trying to be healthier. Um, for me, Percy, I just find that will make my skin go crazy. It's probably because I have such a crap diet. When I do have anything healthy, my skin goes into shock and just wants to like come off my face. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the products. I'm going to tell you exactly what I do if and when I start to break out. My secret is to pretty much not do a lot. <laughs> I take breakouts as a sign that I just need to kind of let my skin chill for a little bit. That's not to say that my products are like causing breakouts, but sometimes when I introduce a new product, 
I'm gonna break out, whether it's what we refer to as purging, or maybe my skin just doesn't like it very much. I like to take my skincare back to basics, so cleanser, toner, a spot treatment, and a moisturizer. Maybe once I'll use an AHA, so a chemical exfoliator, but I tend to just leave any kind of active ingredients out for a little bit. I do, I do still think it's important to exfoliate because we don't want dead skin leading to further breakouts if that makes sense but i don't but i wouldn't use an exfoliator the three times a week three even four times a week that i sometimes do so let's talk about my routine i know when people are breaking out or do suffer with acne or even just occasional breakout it's very popular to use a cleanser that contains maybe something like salicylic acid or glycolic acid but personally for me i like to pick something um very gentle with ingredients that i know are going to benefit my skin at this particular time of need so my go-to cleanser whenever my skin changes in the slightest maybe a little bit of redness a breakout just looks like crap i reach for my crave beauty matcha hemp hydrating cleanser hydration is still important when we have breakouts and i'll talk about that when we get to the moisturizer stage but this cleanser has matcha which is a powerful antioxidant as well as hemp seed oil which is actually antibacterial so great for inflamed skin spots and acne it's also just a very gentle cleanser so when it comes to a toner i often use toners as like a layer of hydration i always say this but as someone who's oily i don't like to rely on just my moisturizer for moisture and hydration because especially in summer it can feel a little bit too heavy so i like to hydrate wherever i can in my routine but when it comes to a toner when i'm breaking out i like to use it for a few different reasons and also less about hydration still important but there's another reason i use it so i use the toner in the traditional sense that i use it on a cotton pad to wipe away any excess cleanser which is super important when we're breaking out we want to make sure it's all off especially around our hairline beard area corners of our nose etc we don't want excess cleanser to cause these further breakouts but you may have noticed i'm not using a serum or an essence that's usually because with my serums and essences i look for more active ingredients and even if it's not necessary active ingredients i just like to strip it back and keep it simple so for my toner i'm really looking for this toner to feed my skin a few little extra ingredients so having all those products in one um feels a lot better on my spot pro skin rather than layering up those products if that makes sense i hope that makes sense that sounded confusing to me there are a lot of toners that can control excess sebum which can cause breakouts and that is usually when i get them is when i'm sweaty or super oily especially in the summer as i keep mentioning like now i'm breaking out a lot more often so a toner that controls sebum without stripping oil from my skin is exactly what i need whilst i'm breaking out so i'm actually using the e nature squeeze green watery toner um it comes in perfect here hydrates without feeling heavy and it doesn't sit on the skin there you also have kale and chlorophyll to help keep current spots happy and take down inflammation whilst helping to prevent further breakouts as well now for me this is where a spot treatment will come in zinc oxide has proven itself to work quite well on my skin with breakouts a lot of people really like zinc oxide in the spot treatments one thing i don't do is get those really heavy alcohol based spot treatments that dry out your spot because one thing that's guaranteed to happen if i do that is it leaves a dark spot and then it just drags on this one simple little breakout um for months that i could have like kind of just got rid of within a week so using a spot cream helps a lot more for me um something like the cosrx ac collection ultimate spot cream um one of the only products i actually like from the ac range to be honest of course it contains zinc oxide and a tiny amount of tea tree so nothing too irritating in there so i don't go crazy with spot cream i apply a little bit to the spot rub it in gently i then wait half an hour just before applying my moisturizer to give the spot cream a chance to actually penetrate the skin i read somewhere i think it was paula's choice that um products take about 30 minutes to sink into the skin and it seems to work for me so once i apply the spot treatment wait 30 minutes and that's another thing as well is we want the spot treatment to um go into your skincare routine at a stage where it's co uh, closest to the skin so applying it after a moisturizer you kind of got that barrier so that's why before i've used a toner that sinks right into the skin rather than leaving like a hydrating glow so that spot treatment can really do its work then our next step and final step for the evening is a what is it moisturizer breakouts for me as i mentioned really happen mainly kind of a little bit because of products but i feel like i know what works for me and what do doesn't but mainly when um i'm 
oily, sweaty, oils are going crazy, and my skin feels congested and unbalanced. And I do feel like a lot of people think when they're breaking out or they have acne that they should leave moisturizers alone because it clogs pores and all that kind of stuff. However, it's pretty much a moisturizer's job to keep our oils um, acting as normal, keep our skin behaving as normal. And yeah, with the right moisturizer, um, especially if like me have oily skin, it can help keep those uh, spot causing oils and extra sebum at bay. But again, especially at night, I don't want a moisturizer that lays heavy on my skin. So I like a moisturizer that hydrates and moisturizes my skin, that sinks in yet doesn't leave me dry. And just like the toner, I'm using a moisturizer from the same brand that I absolutely love. This is the Squeeze Green Watery Gel Cream again from E Nature. I mentioned in my haul review how much I love it. I have got another one being sent to me for free, but I love it so much I had to go out and buy another one. It feels nice and soft after as well without having that heavy oily feeling on top. That usually happens if you use too much moisturizer. And just like the toner from the same brand, it's got that kale and chlorophyll in to help minimize your current spot and information and keep spots popping up in the future. But yeah, I love this. It's like light enough to use during the day, um, but nourishing, hydrating and moisturizing enough to use in the evening. I look like I'm literally like done with this one now and I'm really scraping the barrel of it. Okay, so let's go back to talking about zinc oxide, which we know of course is a UV filter. I like my chemical sunscreens and you don't find zinc oxide in chemical sunscreens. You find them in mineral sunscreens, but mineral physical sunscreens don't sit well on my skin at all. They leave me with a very obvious white cast and they actually make my skin a little bit dry. But mineral sunscreens are probably the way to go if you are um, experiencing breakouts or if you do suffer from acne as well. Chemical sunscreens have been known to um, have irritating ingredients in. I think oxybenzone probably been the most known for causing reactions amongst a few others. So yeah, you might want to avoid those during a breakout. Um, I personally do. I don't really have a mineral sunscreen that I love. I'm still waiting for it. The Soon Jung Etude House one is kind of the best one I've used that doesn't leave me with a completely white cast, but I do have to apply it. Then maybe wait about an hour for it to really kind of like settle onto the skin before I even step foot out side of the door. So also with breakouts, as I mentioned earlier, comes a dark spots. I'm guaranteed to get them with every breakout that I have and they're a pain to get rid of, but there are preventive steps like using sunscreen that will uh, prevent them getting darker, prevent you from even getting them when you do have a breakout. Pimple patches. I don't have to say a lot about these, but I will use them in the spot treatment stage. These are great at preventing you from picking your spots. Like I should have put one on my spot here. So if you have them picked it, they're great at um, keeping them clean, back to area free and also helping with the healing process as well. If I do have a white head, I tend to just put this on and it's usually gone by the next day. I absolutely love the Cosrx pimple patches. So yeah, don't have to say much about them. I think we all have them by now or we are all aware of them. And of course I did touch on diet. I know a lot of people go and be like, it's diet. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm also not a dermatologist, but hey, my diet is terrible as well. But things like drinking water really does help. I do notice that the lack of water um, it will equal a breakout. I've mentioned before that I've been going to the gym recently and I am breaking out like crazy. Like, um, I think it's a good mix of um, my skin like clearing out, sweat, but also the bacteria from the gym, other people's sweat, um, gross stuff like that. Um, so again, a lot of you have already shared your gym breakout tips, but please let me know down below. I'm gonna be trying all of these to hopefully eventually then come up with like a gym skincare routine or techniques you can use to keep your skin spot free whilst working out. If you've got any spot tips or what you swear by, leave that in the description box down below. Share it with us. We can all benefit from it. But that's it from me now, guys. I will see you next time.